Well, hello, good morning. It's uh, 10 to 11 on Tuesday, the something of September. I can't remember the date again. I'll put it down here like I did last time. I'm actually at the recreation area of uh, the village of Blagden in the, on the road from Bath to Western Supermare. It's nestled below the Mendips. And then there's a drop down to Blagden Lake behind me. And uh, I'm actually trying to imagine that view without the lake. And you may be sort of wondering, what's he doing that for? So um, this is a little bit of explanation I did a couple of days ago, which hopefully is going to explain what I'm up to today. So I'll see you shortly. So this story started about 10 or 11 years ago. Me and Linda had, had rented a cottage down in the Camel Valley in Cornwall. And while I was down there, I'd frozen through the road up this, and it seemed to suggest there was a vista centre at a nearby wind farm. I actually quite fancy to look at round. So we drove up there and it's clear when we got there there was no such visitor centre so we sort of felt wasted a journey. As we were driving back down to sort of join, rejoin the A39 came across what's an old railway station which actually now housed a cycling museum. So we drove in, had a look round and the curator or the owner, really friendly and anybody who knows me would now I'm not really into the hardware or the equipment side of things. I'm just instantly drawn to the books and the publications. And one in particular really jumped out at me. It was this one here. And I browsed to it and sort of decided I'd quite like to buy it. And it's dated 1949, priced nine old pennies. So I sort of mistakenly assumed it would be a collector's item and the price would reflect that. So I said to the curator, how much? And he said... 40 pence, that sounded right. And I said, yeah, that sounds really great. Yeah, I'll, I'll buy it. And so that's how this all started. So what instantly drew me to this front cover was I just love the use of one colour against the background of negative space. Um, what's not there is almost as important as what is there. The picture there, two cyclists and a walker pouring over a map. The walker appears to be pointing at the map. Um, I can just relate to that. I've been in that situation so many times, asking directions or being asked directions and, and doing my best to aid fellow travellers. They're clearly by a signpost somewhere, so there's some sort of question there. It almost invites you to join in. So once I've absorbed the front cover of any sort of book, magazine, report, whatever it is, I'll always start at the back and work my way forwards. Oh, straight away, look come across what looks like a really interesting map of the network of hostels. Then as I start working forwards I get a feel, it's a bit like doing a recce really, um, it's clearly a handbook of some sort. Oh look, some old black and white plates, looks interesting. And then how the front of the book has been set out, it's done in regional areas. So I can go to somewhere that I'm sort of familiar with, like the Mendip Hills, get an idea. Is it written in an, an interesting style? Or is and then I will always go to the introduction, the foreword, the uh, exec summary, whatever it is. I'll always go there last. And the reason I do that is because it's been put there for you to read it first. So I'll, rather counterintuitively, I'll read it last. So by doing that, I get a feel for the book. And one of the reasons I do skim backwards, it's a tip I got given from someone years ago, is if you get bored reading through a book, it helps avoid missing any crucial information, which it can be in the middle or towards the back. So you can see each double page section of the handbook is split into four different panels, and each panel represents a hostel. And until I got this book, I never realised Burrington Coombe once had a youth hostel. I've been there so many times beforehand. So I actually became quite fascinated where the hostel could have been. So if you read the description here, it gives you the name of the warden in 1949, which was Mrs Kingman. Then it gives you some rough directions on foot and by bicycle. It also gives you a grid reference. And although I was taught at school how to find grid references with the square method and splitting them into tents, I actually much prefer the modern technique, tapping in the grid reference. You can actually get satellite images, you can zoom in, zoom out, you can 
drag and drop the peg man and quite often get street views. So that's my preferred method these days. So it gives you the hostel details. Interestingly, is men 12 beds, women 10 beds. Now today that would probably be male, female, so that's different. Um, the opening dates in 1949 were April the 1st until September the 2nd inclusive. And then there was a short gap and then it reopened again the 11th through to the 30th of September. I'm guessing that may well have been the warden's own holidays but that really is just a guess. Um, interestingly there used to be a store and a post office three quarters of a mile away. ECD, I thought about that, that probably means early closing day Saturday. No meals provided, but well, that's actually not unusual for remote hostels even nowadays. Many are still self-catering. Bed fees only to be sent. Um, don't fully understand that, but I think I get the gist of that. This is strange. Ladies, p please bring slippers. Well, why wouldn't men be advised to bring slippers as well? That, that just seems bizarre. I visited a hostel recently where they really did ask you to remove your shoes and boots at the front door and you either walked around barefoot inside or in some sort of sandal or slipper or crock. Um, gives you the mainline station at Yatton. Interestingly, it gives you the old branch line station at Winscombe, four and a half miles away. That's no longer there. That was closed in the 60s. It also gives you the bus stop, which was three quarters of a mile away, either to Western or towards Bristol. And just like today's hostel guides, it gives you the nearby youth hostels. So there used to be one in Bath Eastern in Bath, which is now gone. The modern day hostel in Bath is at Bathwick Hill. Biddisham, that's near Axbridge, near Cheddar, that's gone. Bristol, 17 miles away. That one has since gone. The modern day Bristol hostel is on the harbour side. Crosscombe, 12 miles away. Crosscombe is a village in the Sheppey Valley on the road between Wells and Shepton Mallet. Hutton, 10 miles away. Hutton is a suburb of Western Supermare. In fact, probably these days it's probably been incorporated into Western Supermare. Yeah, so absolutely intrigued by the this Burrington listing and realising one of my favourite places in the Mendip once upon a time had a youth hostel. Another cycling guide I've got from 1948 was actually given to me by a friend of Linda. She picks these up at car boot sales and shows and she tends to give me them for Christmas and birthdays and they're always much appreciated. There's this one of southwest England and of particular interest in here is there's a reference to Burrington Youth Hostel and this tour around Glastonbury and the Mendip Hills describes at the bottom of the Burrington Coombe descent. East of Burrington village and on high ground but difficult to find is Burrington Youth Hostel at Ham so there's another reference to the hostel. So a few years ago me and Linda were staying at Irby Youth Hostel and in the evening in the common room we were flicking through a copy of this book. It's um, it's a record and a document of the first 80 years of YHA and it's a fantastic book. Linda bought me this particular copy as a Christmas present that year. There's some wonderful photographs in here of YHA but unfortunately no reference whatsoever to Burrington Youth Hostel. So next up uh, was an internet search. So a quick web search and searching for Burrington Coombe Youth Hostel related articles and in particular I was looking for a photograph um, threw up a few wiki entries although I very quickly realised the official YHA historical archive is now actually held at the Cabri Research Centre at the Library at the University of Birmingham so that led me to this really listing of all the youth hostels current and former ones and there's quite a good section, an entry here for Burrington. Um, it says it was open from 1942 to 54, whereas the wiki entries seem to suggest 43 to 54. Although I think that's explained by this. This entry being more detailed says it was opened at the end of July 1942. So I think that's what wiki's referring to. It's actually first went in the handbook the following year from 43 to 54 so that appears to explain that gives you a little bit about the wartime arrangements 
and it does suggest some of the infrastructure was transferred down from Dursley Hostel. Uh, it does confirm here the hostel was difficult to find and there was 10 painted signs were erected to aid in location and it also confirms the house and outbuildings were in an isolated position so that's quite a fair bit of detail. So the original purpose of this web search for me was to try and unearth some photographic record of the hostel rather tantalisingly on this document there's a reference to a postcard view although it's not attached but as so often happens when you go searching for one thing something completely unexpected crops up and that's exactly what's happened here on the very next page for me this is actually probably more important than a photograph it's a written account of a visit to um, Burrington Hostel by a Mabel Pratt in September of 1948. It comes across as the challenge of actually just locating the hostel and the physical demand of actually reaching it and then a description of the location. And I guess what surprised me was the hostel was actually open during the war and this visit was in September of 1948. So you know, these are still quite austere times. So the purpose of today's visit, really, I was inspired by this simple paragraph. Um, it's just really fired my imagination and I wanted to try and replicate that. You know, the challenge of finding the, the hostel, um, the location of it, and just the sense and the feel of what it was could have been like arriving at a hostel after a long day's cycling. So that's really the purpose of this, for want of a better word, this mission today.